You'll be tasked with understanding and providing figures that determine how much money a company will have to put into uh, a chemical plant or a chemical process from uh, ideation to, to actual profitability. And you will be tasked with understanding, uh, well, now I have to erect a new plant for this thing and, and run this from the ground up and produce a chemical or a product that I want and start selling it, all right? And all the, all the money and all the economics that go into it are very important. Uh, and you're gonna have to uh, detail each one of these facets so you understand where money goes into, okay? And before we go into the actual chemical plant, I wanna give you an, uh, a little more concrete of an example. Let's say you decide to to open up an ice cream shop, a vegan ice cream shop that sells sustainable and organic uh, vegan, I don't know what, uh, strawberry flavored ice cream. And you wanna do that, I don't know, down on Fulton Street. So now what you have to do is you have to go find a shop and renovate it and pay and pay realtors and util and, uh, and contractors and other professionals to, to, to get this thing to the point where you can actually start using it. You have to put an investment into that. That investment that you put in is called the total permanent investment. You have to put money in before you even start selling ice cream, okay? On day one, you're gonna start selling ice cream. You have to hire workers and maintenance uh, workers and you're gonna have to worry about maintenance in general and other overhead expenses and insurance companies and uh, anything like that. But you're also making money on the side. You're also actually selling ice cream. So customers come in, they're gonna start selling, you're gonna start selling ice cream to these customers. You're gonna make money on that. And then you're gonna collect that money. And then you're also going to uh, lose money due to the fact that you, know, you have to pay workers and things like that, right? The money that's involved with the day-to-day -day operation after the total permanent investment started, that's known as the working capital. And when you add them both up, that's known as the total capital investment. Same thing happens in a chemical plant, okay? Um, the chemical plant, you're gonna have to uh, invest at first up front uh, in purchasing land, developing it, paying a contractor to come in, deal with foundation, erect the plant, put in, put in a, uh, any sort of uh, HVAC system into it, any piping, any utilities, any any facilities that are related to it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's the total permanent investment, okay? Once you start producing the, the actual chemical that you, you're, you're gonna be selling, uh, you're gonna have to pay workers to come in, engineers, supervisors, uh, janitors, cafeteria workers, uh, any, any related costs at all. Uh, and you're gonna put that all in, and that's gonna be your working capital. When you add these two up, that's gonna be a total capital investment. Uh, and that, total capital investment occurs until the point we have the break-even point. And what is the break-even point? That is when you start making money overall. When you selling your product uh, offsets all of the other costs. Okay, so let's talk about uh, grassroots and battery limits and things like that. So if you, uh, if you want to completely construct this chemical plant from the beginning, that is gonna be grassroots operation. Right. If you only want to add a chemical plant or an addition to a chemical plant, that is known uh, that is known as a, something that would be a battery limit. So you want to have to just worry about uh, whatever is in this dotted uh, rectangle here. Okay. So if you're doing grassroots operation, you're gonna have to worry about everything. You have to worry about utilities coming in. You have to you have to pay utilities company companies to come in and connect you to the steam, to the natural gas, to the fuel oil, to the inert gas to the refrigeration, to the water and all that. You have to pay uh, utilities company to come and collect your waste and uh, dispose your solids and things like that. You have to uh, build storage facilities. You have to, uh, maybe it's in a remote place, side in town somewhere. So you have to actually maybe build a train station to stop there for workers to come in. Uh, you have to put in things like uh, a library or a cafeteria or offices for people to go into. That is a, a grassroots operation. But if you're, if you're part of an industrial park, and these things are already there, then you only have to worry about your process itself. Everything else is already there. Maybe you have to worry about some storage and handling, maybe not, but for the most part, you're gonna have to worry about the process itself. Everything else is already hooked up. You just kind of plug yourself in. Okay, so those two things are very important because obviously battery limits design will be cheaper than a grassroots design.
Okay, let's talk about the permanent investment again. The total permanent investment, which is all the stuff you put in before you start actually selling things. All right, the total permanent investment is actually broken down into uh, direct permanent investment plus indirect permanent investment. Okay, and direct permanent investment, according to your text, they'll, they'll give you these factors. Uh, these are things that are the preparation for the site, uh, to service the facilities, any utilities that gotta be hooked up, uh, any installation of equipment, uh, any equipment you have to purchase and put that in directly. Uh, and then indirect stuff, that's gonna be stuff that's not directly related to your process, but you still have to pay. So that's gonna be the construction costs or the engineers that construct it also, supervision for them. Uh, any sort of uh, 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 land costs or any regulatory agencies and local and federal uh, laws they have to abide by, they have to pay things. Any trademarks and royalties you have to pay while you're doing all this stuff. This is indirect, okay? You add the two up and that's going to give you the, the total permanent investment, which again is everything that you have to put in up front before you actually start selling your product. Once you start selling your product, you have to worry about the working capital and that's going to give you the total, uh, the, to the, the, the TCI as before. So, um, this is a typical range of the total permanent investment. Uh, and you, we're not going to necessarily use this table. I just want to show you uh, what percent of the investment has to go into each one of these uh, things. So, so you kind of get an idea that say the vast majority of it, a lot of it will have to do with the equipment that you have to purchase for your for your process, uh, which makes sense. When you're creating a, a, a product, you have to put in a lot, a lot of front for this product to actually reach the market and marketability. And if there is, uh, if, if your process is unique and has to, has to use specific pieces of equipment, you have to have very niche pieces of equipment and it's gonna go up. This is gonna be uh, towards the 40 end. If it's a pretty routine uh, type thing, uh, it's going to be on the lower end, towards 15, okay. Let's see how we can estimate this stuff using a variety of uh, a variety of methods. One type thing is uh, using the order of magnitude approach, and that's again, as I will remind I will remind you over and over again, these things are not uh, uh, mathematically grounded. These are just based on empirical observations and are just relations we use for estimation purposes. What you get out of this is not necessarily what you have to pay. But to, to estimate the total capital investment here, we're gonna treat each piece of equipment, we're gonna call it C sub M, and it's going to be equal to this, all of this, okay? Um, and it's gonna be $160,000 times uh, a factor from, from a table, so F sub M is gonna come from a table, and it has to do with the material from which the piece of equipment is, is constructed. So if you're gonna buy a centrifuge that's made of steel, use this. If it's made of titanium, use this. And it, this, is, this, this expands. You can look at a table that's much larger than just three. Uh, you multiply by a pressure factor, and this is only applicable for uh, pressures if your process is at a pressure of 100 PSI or more. If it's below, just ignore it. This goes to one, okay? And then use the process flow rate in pounds per year. Make sure that the unit is pounds per year. You divide it by 10 million and you rate that to the 0.6. This is gonna give you the, the, the cost for each piece of equipment, no matter what the piece of equipment is. So you can see right, right away, this is wrong. This is not gonna be completely correct because, well, centrifuges will not cost the same as reactors, but this treats them all the same, okay? Uh, the only thing that changes is the material of construction. Then to estimate the total capital investment for your entire operation, well, uh, you're gonna use this, uh, one plus F1 plus F2, which again, are dependent on your operation uh, nature. And again, FPI comes from a table, depending on the type of plant that you're doing. And you're gonna multiply that by the Marshall Swift Cost Index and divide it by 1365. It's pretty simple, and the it looks uh, it looks complicated, but it's just plug and chug, really. It's literally plug and chug. And if you use a spreadsheet uh, software like Excel, this will be pretty easy. And again, I will remind you that for order of magnitude, all pieces of equipment are exactly the same. So let's say you know how many pieces of equipment you have, like ten of them. You do you do it for all ten of them, and you put that in here this won't change. You just do it once and you multiply this by this and you get the total capital investment. 
right? And that's just an estimation, okay? This is a pretty bad uh, 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 way of, of estimating things, but it's one of the better ways of, of coming up with things uh, in the absence of, uh, of actual data, right? The reason we were doing this is because you can actually do all of this for a chemical plant with, let's say you have uh, a few dozen pieces of equipment and you know all this stuff. You can do a quick and dirty uh, estimation of the total capital investment to your supervisors before you actually have to invest months and months and months estimating every every little thing and every minutia that's related to this chemical plant. So this is the reason we're doing this. So we have a head start understand, uh, understanding of should we even invest time into into this? So if this comes up positive or close to positive, people may may choose to continue with this uh, with this investigation. Okay, another way of doing this is uh, the Lang factors, and you can either estimate the total permanent investment or the total capital investment, whatever you want. And this has to do with a Lang factor. Uh, again, if your type of plant deals with solids or with fluids or with solid fluids, this will change. Uh, it's multiplied by another factor of 1.05, and this is multiplied by uh, an equipment cost uh, for the uh, whatever pieces of equipment you have, okay? So you can get either the TCI or the TPI, okay? Uh, now, uh, you can also get pieces of equipment based on other costs. Uh, I, I invite you to look into this if you're interested, sort of uh, based on an approximated amount, uh, but I will not use this specifically. All right. The most rigorous and meticulous way of doing this is to do detailed estimation. And like I said, the accuracy is going to be pretty high, but it's going to take you a long, long time to get a detailed item estimation.